Gu Wen crosses the distance between him and Du He after declaring that he doesn't care if he will die because of Du He. He wants to be by Du He's side, even if it means putting his life in danger. He kisses Du He under the sprinkling water, and Du He kisses him back with equal passion. There is no denying their undying love for one another. And then, Du He notices the bandage on Gu Wen's chest. She worries that it will get wet. But when Gu Wen holds her hand, his power comes back and it's as if time stood still as they both look into each other's eyes with eyes full of emotion. At home, they continue to show their love for one another, and starting from now, they will be truly called husband and wife for real, not just for any contract. A contract made with their true feelings and emotions. The next morning, Gu Wen wakes up and admires the beauty that is in front of him. He realizes that this is what human's foolishness is all about, being in love. Do he, then wakes up. But upon noticing Gu Wen's eyes were on her, she became shy. But Gu Wen wants to see her face and ask her to go out and eat because he is hungry. Another human characteristic he now experiences. At Gu Wen's clock room, all of the clocks suddenly stopped moving. Then, they went on a date at the restaurant where they first met. Unlike before, Gu Wen doesn't reserve the restaurant by himself because he wants to experience how it feels to have humans around him. He wants to experience being in a couple with Dehi. The waiter seems to recognize him because he acts scared when taking their orders. The man, Dehi, asks for marriage registration before, is present there as well with his date. But Gu Wen scared him when they heard him boasting about Dehi's proposal to him. Do he and Gu Wen eat ice cream on the park bench when Bok Ju calls his boss and asks him to open his door because he is in front of his room. Gu Wen informs Bok Ju that he is not in the house and in fact, is in the park right now with Do He. Gu Wen wants to experience all the insignificant things a couple normally does. They ride a couple bikes. Even though Do He is tired, she gives in to what Gu Wen wants to do. As they walked in the park, they talked about what a demon was like. Gu Wen explains to Du He what the real meaning of a demon is. They went to drink refreshments and watch the sunset. Gu Wen wants to be called hubby by Du He and acts annoyed when Du He initially doesn't want to. On the other hand, Su An decides to spy on Du He and takes pictures of them while they are on a date. She wants to know what Du He is up to after deciding to withdraw her candidacy for the company's presidency. When Du He and Gu Wen arrive at the apartment's building, the song that the killer used is playing, and Do He stands still, waiting anxiously to see if someone will appear at the end of the hall, but another resident comes in, talking to someone on the phone. Inside the house, Gu Wen plays the music and asks Do He to dance with him. At first, Do He hesitated, but Gu Wen assured her that he would be his guide. They dance to the music Gu Wen now calls their own song. Do He's feet are above Gu Wen while they sweetly embrace and dance on the balcony. At the golf club, Sok Min and his allies are playing golf while talking about the presidency position Sok Min is eyeing. Then, while in the car with Du Kyung, Sok Min remembers her mother trying to wash off dirt from her. Sok Min notices that Du Kyung had another cell phone, and Du Kyung makes an excuse about it. The next morning, Du He happily mumbles to herself that her decision turned out to be what makes her happy now. Even though Gu Wan requested another day off from Du He, they still ended up in the company because Sok Min sent a document to Do He regarding her giving up on her inheritance from Madame Chun Suk. Gu Wen urges Do He to find the culprit since he remembers his true face now. Eventually, Do He agrees with him, but his power doesn't work as Gu Wen holds her arm, and that's the scene Sok Hoon sees when he enters Do He's office. Sok Hoon talks to Do He alone. He asks Do He if she has any regrets regarding her decision to withdraw from the candidacy. Do He tells him that she has no regrets and thinks it was the best decision. Sok Hoon also notices Do He's tattoo and remembers how she didn't want to get a tattoo before. As Sok Hoon leaves Do He's office, he sees Gu Wan and wants to have a talk with him. What they only agreed upon was that they both wanted Do He to fight back again and not let her surrender. Aside from that, they surely didn't like each other. Then, the detective still believes that Do He is innocent, and there's more to what's happened to her, especially the attempted killings. Gu Wen appears and requests that they do a sketch of the killer's half face. At Sunwol's foundation, wild dogs start to serve Gu Wen by cleaning the building and checking everyone who enters the building. Then, when Gu Wen came, he ordered them to find the culprit and gives them the sketch, or never show their faces to him again. Gleefully, like children who were excited to play, they all went to find the killer, 
Ga Yong thought that Gu Wan was back to his old self, not caring about insignificant humans. But she became enraged when Gu Wan told her that he would not give up on Du He and told Ga Yong to stop crossing the line between them. As Du He signs the document sent by Sok Min, she invites Da Jing to have a drink with her. They end up drinking together. Du He asks Da Jing about her married life before, and Da Jing details how he became stronger because of the destruction she encountered, referring to her failed marriage. While driving, Gu Wan receives a call from Du He calling him hubby. As it turns out, Du He and Da Jing were so drunk that they were doing silly things together, singing and even saying random things. Gu Wan orders Bok Ju to take care of Da Jing while he takes care of Du He. He requested a piggyback ride from Gu Wan, to which he happily obliged. Meanwhile, the wild dogs start to search for the killer on the street, and the detectives find a match in their record of the killer. Then, while Bok Ju is assisting Da Jing to go home, he notices the shape of the moon. The killer receives a message from his boss. He brings gasoline to his home and sees the boss waiting inside. The boss is none other than Sok Min. He tries to kill the killer by putting a rope around his neck, but the killer managed to escape and hide in his room. Sok Min then put the gasoline on the entrance of the killer's room and set it on fire. Sok Min aided in the release of the murderer from prison before. The killer's room is engulfed in fire, and he is consumed as well. Sok Min remembers the time he last talked to his mother about the employee he killed in the bathroom and how he replaced her medicine with the one the chairman is allergic to. He also reads the demon's manual for Gu Wan. The next morning, Du He has a hangover because of last night's drinking. Suddenly, Du He and Gu Wan receive a call, informing them of the killer's identity and whereabouts. They immediately head off to the killer's hideout, but they found him burned to death with a knife sticking out of his chest. Gu Wan remembers the knife. It is the same knife the killer used to stab him. When Sa Kun came and asked about the killer, Gu Wan excused himself and told Du He to go home with Sa Kun. Gu Wan went home and searched for the bug under his desk. Bok Ju came, and he told him about the killer's death, but he knew that the real culprit was still out there. Then, suddenly, he looks at his clock room and notices that all the clocks have stopped moving. Also, all the contracts floated in the air and started to turn into ashes as all of them burned one by one. He went to the hospital, where his last contract was made, and sees the sick girl. Sa Kun goes to the Sunwell Foundation and has a talk with Ga Yong. Somewhere, Ga Yong reveals to Sa Kun Gu Wan's identity, believing that what she is doing is right for Gu Wan's sake. Meanwhile, Gu Wan went to the subway and searched for the beggar. The beggar takes him to a bar, where everyone treats the beggar like she is someone in high society. Then, with just a flick of her finger, the place around them changed. She tells Gu Wan that she is the one who gave Gu Wan his powers. She is the god, but she tells Gu Wan she cannot bring back his power because the power of Gu Wan is now in the wrong body. But there is still way for Gu Wan to take back his power. The beggar tells Gu Wan that the power will return to him once do he dies. 